I mean, I, I remember being in the studio. My sessions were held up a couple times because a jingle needed to go out. Yes. Um, I remember those conversations. I couldn't complain because I, I didn't pay. <laughs> so, but the there were. It's been, in I I want to say in the last. Fifteen, sixteen. You guys have been around for close to twenty years. Close to yes. Yeah. Um. So in. That, oh, it's a long time. Yep. You know. Um. <laughs> so in in that time in the last decade and a half to 16 17 years um what would you guys say because the industry now is changing completely right but what would you guys say is different and what would you say is the same right mm. things whether it is what labels are doing what yeah. artists are doing yeah. what managers are doing did we even have mm. i mean osaga was my manager yeah then yeah but what has changed Wh- what are the things you notice people were doing wrong as people who had a platform and a business mm. and seeing artists come in and interact with your business what are the things that you were seeing then and still seeing now what are those mistakes let's start with the, let's start with the things you feel are wrong that they were doing that they're still doing okay before we jump into um directly into that um i think um one of the things that um we also did at the time was we noticed the way record labels were being run and it didn't really make much sense to us you know because we were like it's it's not working Mm. like artists are being fleeced um there was this there was a stranglehold on the kind of music there was a stranglehold on radio airplay you know stuff like that and um at that point in time like i said we had a network and this network cut across a lot of things. I mean, we had get friends in the radio, yeah. on radio. We had friends on TV. We had friends in a couple of corporate places. Yeah, they were s- not at the top of the ladder, yeah. but they were there, you know. And we had artist friends and all that. So we, when we started, when we eventually decided to, you know, properly synergize this thing and make it into something structurable, we were we created that. Um, I don't know, like a synergy between everything and everyone. Mm. So we we started our record label like a family because I remember that we would hang out with people, and and you know we would we would have business meetings like we were ha- like we were chilling, mm. <laughs> she gets, yeah. and artists had a say not only in the music but they also had a say in the managing yeah and you know and then you had people like osagi and all you okay not you at the time yeah. but other people who you know wanted to do artist management but hadn't done it before they yeah. they didn't know what was going on and you know we were able to work with those people as well so i i think i think the first thing is that mm. building that that um structure where it was in it was tr- a truly independent record label but that was also able to achieve some of the things that um the big labels big or labels the mainstream labels were able to achieve yeah so i i i think w- um one thing that was really different then is probably the structure of the record label mm. and now that has changed yeah you know i'm not saying we were solely responsible for that but i i think we created a model which um was easy for other people to replicate you get and actually led to you know a lot more record labels a lot more people able to do their own thing without yeah. the need for trying to have some big god daddy yeah. media or something yeah. Yeah. yeah i think um the one thing that has changed the one thing that um the one good change the biggest to me is access. Yeah. The one bad thing that has refused to change is structure. I think structure had, uh, had always been a problem in the industry. Mm. And Jar just did not have a structure. The only structure that I feel the, the music industry has ever had in Nigeria was built on piracy and that was Alaba. Alaba was a structure. Mm. That was that was how they were able That's to how you get music pull out. off 
you yeah. know, the heist that they did. Because it was a structure. Bring your music, they had a network, they had, you know, they had marketing channels, they had everything, yeah. production channels, they had everything. So, like what Rogba said, I think um, the, the issue now is everybody feels like they need to eat from one pot. They need to, they need to, um, they need to talk to these same OAPs. They need to talk to these same brand managers. They need to talk to these same, they need to know these same people, these same set of gatekeepers, what, gatekeepers <laughs> more or less. And everything is, is, is out, it's out the window because you can actually build your structure. That's what we did. We had um, from our little 14 artist experiment, we had some people that went to radio. Mm. We had some people that went to TV. We had some people that went to print. We had some people that went into, into management. Corporate, yeah. We had some people that went into corporate. So when we became a management slash record label, we could reach out to these people like, yo, can I get airplay? You know, um, yo, can I get can I get this deal? Can 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 you guys just um you guys are launching this product, you know, give us this jingle. We will do it for half the price. But we are going to get our artist to sing the jingle because we want to get this artist's mm. voice on yeah. radio. On radio yeah. You know, a lot of things like that. And I, I think it worked for a while. It went like that for a while, but I'm beginning to see it going back to the same old gatekeepers, the same old everybody trying to fit into that one, this one small funnel where I, and I say it all the time, I tell artists that are young and in university, and I'm like, um, why are you looking for a label that is going to um, pay someone to put you on a show at the end of the year when you are in uni, you can actually organize like a tour of, of student halls, a tour of this or that, and from there, from there you can build, uh, you can build uh what you might call it your own network you can build a network of graphic artists um mix engineers mm -hmm. and all of that people your age people around your like that you guys can build together and grow together so by the time you get to that level everybody everybody has grown together to that level so by the time you hit that a leap i mean you have you have people that are that will they you've sold them your dream they understand where you're coming from they believe you you know and it's not just making money for them so i feel that's that's one thing mm -hmm.